Dear colleagues, today I want to show you a little bit about cortical blood cell implantology. This is the work with a strategic implant uh, as it is done today uh, almost around the world. Um, we get lots of requests for training and uh, I would like to show you this animation in order to motivate you to come to these training sessions which are in various countries of the world and it's available in English language and German and in Russian language. Uh, the, the technology of the strategic implant utilizes uh, the cortical, so these implants are anchored in the cortical floor of the nose and uh, they then go, I mean this vertical shaft of this implant goes through the alveolar bone and finally the abutment is positioned inside the oral cavity. Um, the distal implants which you see here, there are two distal implants uh, going into the tubular pterid region. This is the uh, area where the pterygoid plate of the sphenoid bone is connected to the distal maxilla, so the, in this fusion zone the distal implants are anchored, we find the very highly mineralized bone and this bone is then utilized for implant anchorage. This is a case where the implants have been in already for some time and the pictures were taken for a control um, in that moment when the, br the bridge in both jaw was uh, exchanged. The International Implant Foundation uh, offers courses for this uh, implant technology, which is uh, full of advantages compared to the two-stage implantology. First of all, we can work in immediate loading, uh, which is uh, very good for the patients. We can even extract the teeth uh, and right away put the implants into the sockets. Uh, so this is what the patient wants and what the patient expects nowadays. The teeth are being extracted and implants are placed and within a short time um, these bridges are incorporated. Uh, the implants are available for cementing and for screw connection, so with a multi-unit abutment. Um, although this multi-unit abutment um, is quite tempting, if you look for example at the Orland Ford technologies, they use a lot of uh, screwable bridges. Uh, so although this is tempting and it's available, we don't see that uh, a lot of doctors are really working with a multi-unit uh, system, but they rather uh, prefer to cement the bridges with a permanent cement, of course, and uh, so these doctors don't uh, like to work with a screw connection for various reasons. As you see in this animation also, the implants uh, are anchored far away from the first cortical, so from the, from the crestal cortical, anchorage is always in the second cortical, and we only have to determine which second cortical we are going to use. This implant is anchored in the floor of the sinus, the cortical floor of the sinus, and the second distal implant is anchored in the tubular pterygoid region. So this combination is very successful. Um, this implant is on the palatal side, probably it's a method 11 implant. In the lower jaw you see a combination of compression screws and strategic implant. So this last implant uh, with, the, with the apical threads is a strategic implant. Uh, this implant is compression screw, also compression screw and you see a visual visualization of the nerve. You see these are the strategic implants and this is the compression screw. Um, the implants are combined together by circular bridges, so circular bridges are done both in the upper and in the lower jaw. It looks like these uh, two parts of the bridges are not connected though, but the typical and the best and the safest construction is the circular bridge in both jaws. I know that there has been literature um, available in the 90s and the 80s of last century writing that uh, circular bridges in the lower jaw should not be done due to the flexion of the mandible. Um, we are doing this for more than 20 years and for many tens of thousands of implants and we have not encountered these problems. So uh, maybe the, this limitation for circular bridges is true for two-stage implants only which uh, do not anchor in the second cortical, uh, which have a uh, rough surface and which uh, are placed with the intention to also integrate. So this is a completely different chapter of implantology. We are working like traumatologists, like orthopedic surgeons. We are using only the corticals for anchorage, for primary fixation. We call this osseofixation. 
And later the implants can also integrate, as you see here in these, in these long and polished shafts, two millimeter in diameter. We will see also integration, of course, up to years, but the also integration is not necessary for the primary success or for the long term success of this implant technology. Now, having said all this, I think it becomes clear that we have today in the world two different types of dental implantology. So the old dental implantology is the, this type of procedure which uh, uses also integration, which works the two-stage implants and where the doctors believe that the surfaces of the implants are important for the success or the long-term success, whatever. Um, <clears throat> we do not believe this. We know very well, and we know this from big studies with thousands of implants, that these thin and polished implants, if they are anchored in the second cortical, uh, the, uh, are very, very successful. So the success rate is high over the years, over many years, and we are observing these implants for more than 20 years now. Uh, and the technology is much easier, it's much more convenient for the patient. And the big, big plus, of course, there is no perimplantitis. So there was never any report about perimplantitis happening to the strategic implant. Uh, this is a very big advantage for the patients. Those colleagues who are putting two-stage implants for many years, they know very well that it's only a matter of time until perimplantitis hit the implant, hit the case. And then we as implantologists are in trouble. And the reason why I use a strategic implant is that I don't want to have these long-term problems. You see here different, different visual, visualization. You see also the soft tissues of the patient, the sinuses and so on. You see approximately the relationship between the soft tissue and the implants. And uh, later in this film, we will also see uh, slight panoramic cuts and I will explain you more on this. As you can imagine, probably there is no anterior contact. From previous three, we don't do any contact. Now, these are the overview pictures. This is a panoramic type of picture. You see that uh, combination of compression screws and strategic implant is placed in this case. Here, another compression screw. <coughs> and I want to draw your attention to this picture. So the implants are, as I said, already a few years in. And you see that there is also integration taking place from the implant into the direction of the cortical, to the lingual cortical and the vestibular cortical. And that there is, you also see that there is no mineralization here between the implants. You see only black, and this is really black. There is no bone or no mineralized bone. And the reason is that, of course, implants are integrating and transmitting the forces only into the direction of the cortical. Everything else makes no sense. Uh, and although these implants are very small, the, the diameter of this vertical shaft is only two millimeter, it is not even necessary to also integrate the whole um, implant, but only the part that uh, looks into the direction of the cortical here and there is really also integrated as a, at a high degree of mineralization. So this picture should make every two-stage implantologist think <laughs> about the question if it's really necessary to buy a two, three, four hundred euro implant with a crazy good surface, because as you can see here, the also integration anyway does not depend on the surface. It it depends on the function, it depends on the functional stimulus. So I mm, can only invite you to come to the courses of the IF, uh, <coughs> where good teachers are in your language probably uh, teaching these, uh, the necessity, giving the necessity information for you to work successfully in your clinic and on your patients. Uh, for any questions, please contact the International Implant Foundation through email. And uh, if you have any question to this film, please contact me directly. Thank you very much for your attention.